Imagine you're in a hotel room and all of a sudden, a mile high tsunami hits your city. I know what you're thinking. That's a silly question. Of course it isn't. I mean, if a mile high tsunami were to hit the United States, wouldn't that cause some pretty serious destruction? What about all of those people on their jet skis? Could they make it? And what about those who live on the waterfront in Miami? What would happen then? How would you survive? Would you be able to run for your life or will you get stuck in the midst of destruction? Well, watch this video and find out what happens if these things were to happen in real life. It will blow your mind. So, what would happen if this tsunami hit? Or any tsunami at all? We all know that there is a lot of water on our planet. Most of this water is located at the bottom of the sea or in lakes and rivers, but there are other parts of the world where our oceans meet with land. One of these places is called the Bering Strait which connects America to Russia. There is a lot of water in this strait and if there was ever a tsunami to happen, it would be massive. The problem with tsunamis is that they're not just defined by size, but also what will happen when it hits land. A tsunami is a huge wave of water that can cause devastation when it hits land. They are usually caused by earthquakes or volcanoes. A mile high tsunami would be an incredibly destructive force. Such a tsunami would likely kill thousands of people and cause billions of dollars in damage. Now. Imagine what it would look like in the United States. If a mile high tsunami hit the United States, it would cause widespread damage and loss of lives and property beyond what you can even imagine. The tsunami would destroy coastal cities, flooding inland areas, while the waves would reach as far inland as the Mississippi River. A mile high tsunami would be an enormous wave that could travel at least a thousand miles an hour. It could devastate cities and coastal regions and cause millions of dollars in damages. There are two questions here. First, the causes. A tsunami can be caused by an earthquake, undersea landslide, or meteorite impact. Second, the effects. A tsunami is composed of a series of waves, and those waves will have different heights when they reach land. The causes of a mile high tsunami are complex and range from the global climate to local weather patterns. For instance, a mile high tsunami can be caused by earthquakes in the ocean floor. These earthquakes can cause massive displacement of water, which then triggers giant waves. The US's coastline is vulnerable to tsunamis because it faces eastward on the Pacific Ocean where there are many volcanoes that can erupt without warning or cause an earthquake. This has led to many smaller tsunamis in recent years. The US also has a large population living near coasts that have built homes and businesses near these coastlines, making them more susceptible to damage from tsunamis than other countries with fewer coastal residences. If a mile high tsunami hits the United States, there would be serious consequences. First and foremost, the country would be flooded with water. The coastline would be destroyed, as well as buildings and roads built on top of hills or mountains. If you were in a city, you'd see waves up to 20 feet high, flooding everything in its path. Even if you weren't in a city or near a coastline, your house could still be destroyed by a tsunami. Water can flow into homes through their sewer systems or even air conditioner units. The most important thing to do when faced with a large scale disaster like this one is not to panic. This is why we need to study our faults and try to map out what might happen if they rupture. And we also need to try to estimate how big the resulting tsunami might be. The majority of tsunamis are brought on by earthquakes that cause significant water displacement near the sea floor. The water is then forced forth in the form of waves that spread out in all directions. Tsunamis can also be caused by underwater volcanic eruptions, landslides, and even meteorites. 
The waves out at sea may be hundreds of miles long, little taller than a few feet, yet travel at the speed of a jet plane, up to 500 miles per hour, as we have detailed earlier. The waves will begin to slow down and heighten as they get closer to shore, slowly to roughly 20 or 30 miles per hour. When they strike land, tsunamis are typically less than 10 feet high, although they may grow to heights of more than 100 feet, areas less than 25 feet above sea level and within a mile of sea will be most at risk when a tsunami hits land. Tsunamis, however, can travel up to 10 miles inland. The water simply continues flowing for a very long time. It's really just sort of relentless. However, Earthquakes are considerably more likely to be the origin of tsunamis that hit the east coast of the USA. While an earthquake by itself is unlikely to induce a tsunami, it may do so indirectly by triggering underwater or island landslides that vertically displace massive amounts of water. The most notable recent event happened in 1929 when an undersea landslide caused by a powerful earthquake, a magnitude of 7.1, 250 miles south of Newfoundland, caused a tsunami which was felt as far south as New York. The Newfoundland coast experienced the most of the tsunami wave heights, which varied from 6 to 23 feet and killed 28 people. However, Tsunami waves were also reported as far south as South Carolina. Additionally, there have been other known and suspected tsunami incidents that have caused localized flooding. Unfortunately, there is little information available about these and other similar incidents, including where they came from, although it is thought that they were caused by local earthquakes either directly or indirectly. It should be noted that none of the recent ones came close to being as destructive as those in the Pacific, but this does not exclude it from happening, and it most likely will, when, however, is currently impossible to predict. At least two time bombs that may cause a mega tsunami to strike the US East Coast and destroy many homes and lives have been identified by scientists. Are you aware that the United States has previously experienced large tsunamis? Undoubtedly, it might happen again. To our new subscribers, we want to say that we love you and that you're the real MVP today and if you are not yet a subscriber, click on that subscribe button and turn on your notifications to get notified whenever we upload a video. Tsunamis that impacted Hawaii, Alaska, and the west coast of the United States were caused by significant earthquakes along the Pacific Rim. A tsunami that was one of the biggest and most destructive to hit Hawaii occurred in 1946 as a result of an earthquake near the Aleutian subduction zone. Runups killed 159 individuals and had a maximum height of 33 to 55 feet. Alaska, Oregon, Hawaii, California, and Washington were all affected by the tsunami that was created by the 1964 Gulf of Alaska magnitude 9.2 earthquake, which also caused damage and fatalities elsewhere in the Pacific. Even if a formal tsunami warning has not yet been issued, make sure to move to high ground if you want to survive the catastrophe. If a tsunami has been produced locally, it may be coming soon. If there is a large earthquake and you live near the shore, you cannot wait for the authorities to arrive. Stay on your boat if it happens to be on the middle of the ocean. If not, the best course of action for you will depend on how much time is left before the tsunami hits. Try to get 2 miles from the coast or a location that is 100 feet above sea level. If you're lucky, the tsunami will have been brought on by a distant earthquake and won't hit for a while. Bring your pets, if you have one, and a disaster supply kit. If you're unsure of where to go, you can perhaps follow the evacuation signals. But 
pay heed to any directions given by emergency officials since they could suggest an alternative escape route to the one that you had in mind. Tsunamis are a very destructive force, but now you'll know what to do if a mile high one wreaks havoc on the United States.